In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add email alerts and SNMP monitoring to a UPS using a Raspberry Pi. For this project, we're going to need a Raspberry Pi. I chose the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, you will need the Raspbian OS installed on it. I actually installed Raspbian Lite on this particular device because I do not need a full graphical interface and I only need uh, remote access to it with the command line. You will also need a UPS that does not have currently a network interface on it. We're going to use the Raspberry Pi to be its network interface. The unit should have a USB output. So you can hook it up to the Raspberry Pi. And this, this is what we'll use to gather um, details about the device. And we'll actually use that to relay it through SNMP. All right, let's get started. I'm going to plug this thing in and we'll get into it remotely. Um, and I'll switch to the desktop. Okay, as I said before, you will need to have a Raspberry Pi with Raspbian OS on it. Uh, I actually have Raspbian Lite installed on mine. You will also need SSH enabled on the Raspberry Pi. And I highly recommend a static IP address on the device if you're going to use SNMP monitoring. Once you have everything enabled on the Raspberry Pi, you need to connect to the Raspberry Pi remotely using an SSH program. I use a program called Kitty. It's actually a port of Putty. You can use whatever you want to connect to the device. Uh, you'll need the IP address and the SSH into it. The default port is 22. So let's go ahead and get into the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to log in. Now, the package that we need to install um, is made by APC, but it does not require an APC UPS. The process is called APC UPSD, which is um, APC UPS Power Management Daemon. Um, and what that means is it will run as a service and you can use it um, to monitor uh, the stats of the device. Let's get started. We'll do install this sudo at get install APC UPS or UPS D. Now that we have the APC software installed, we need to make a change to one of the configuration files, and that is to um, tell the device to communicate with USB. I use Nano. Um, you can use whatever editor you prefer. So sudo uh, Nano in my case. Uh, if I could type, <laughs> and then the config file is in the APC directory and then it's the default config file of APC APSD and we need to configure there is this line right here that says device TTY50 I believe that is for serial um, and we're just going to change this to a device we configured the the configuration file, we need to query the UPS to see if it's working. Um, the first thing we need to do is make sure that the software is not running at us as a service right now. So sudo service APC USD and tell it to stop. And now that we know that the service is not running, we will use the APC test function. To communicate to the UPS. As you can see here, it successfully communicated to the device, and we have a list of options here. Okay, so nothing is actually working, um, most likely because this is not an APC branded UPS, but we do have communications with. Um, the device. 
So let's close out of this. Another piece of software that comes with um, the APC UPSD is APC Access. Um, that should actually give us a little bit more information other than this APC test. Well, let's see what we get when we run that. C X connection report. Oh, that's because we're not running um, the APC service. So to enable the APC service, we need to do a couple things. We need to edit the service file. And we will do that by going to service file, which is located. OK, so we need to edit the, the service file. Uh, the location is in uh, this path right here. Once you open up a file, uh, this is normally configured to say no by default. And we just change this to say yes. We'll save the file. We will start the service. Now that the service is running, now we should be able to run APC. Awesome. So we can see here that it's connected through USB. It's a standalone device, Triplight UPS. Um, it gives you the battery charge, the runtime, and battery remaining. Gives you all the information you need to pass through to SNMP. Now that we've enabled the service and we started the service and we tested um, with the APC access command, um, we know the service is running. We actually need to enable uh, this service to start up on system startup. Every time the Raspberry Pi starts, we need to make sure it starts the service as well. Otherwise, um, we won't get the, the notifications or uh, SNMP password. All right, to do this, uh, we need to run this command. I will actually keep all the commands um, that I use throughout this tutorial in the bottom of the video description because I don't know how readable this is in the video, um, but all the commands will be in the description. Okay, so now that we have um, the service enabled by default, uh, let's go ahead and reboot the Raspberry Pi and verify the service starts up automatically. Um, so let's go ahead and do a reboot. And I will test it as soon as it comes back up. Okay, I am back. The Raspberry Pi has just finished rebooting. And I'm going to reconnect to it. Awesome. And let's see if the service is running and we can connect. Awesome. So now that we know that the service starts up automatically and we can access it, now we can move on with email alerts. With the email alerts, um, there's two APC scripts that. Um, APC has by default installed. Um, these are the scripts that they normally use when it uh, the device goes on battery and then when the device goes off battery. We are actually going to not use uh, these two original files and we're going to create our own original our own files. Um, but I'm going to show you what they look like by default. First one is on battery. Um, the second one is called off battery. This just echoes a message out to the console of the device. This would be helpful if you had a SSH connection into the device all the time and you were kind of keeping track of what's on the console. I will actually demonstrate uh, this default behavior now by unplugging the UPS. I've just unplugged the UPS, and as you as you can hear, it's complaining, and there's a message on the console. I just plug, plug the unit back in. It just switched back to line power, 
And as you can see, it's now returned to power state and the console as well. This is not helpful for what we want to do. So what I'm going to do using Python, and I'm actually using somebody's script that actually has developed of the Python script. I will create a link to his um, tutorial in the description. But for right now, let's go ahead and set this up. The first thing we want to do is we want to make a backup copy of the two default scripts. I will probably never use them, but I guess it's nice to have the original. To do this, uh, we are going to make a copy of the original. Oops, we need to run this. There we go. And then we also need to do the same thing for the off battery script. Pseudo copy off battery script to off battery dot original. Okay, now that, that we have the backup original copies, we can edit this. The script that we're replacing this with uses Python. We're going to edit the on battery script. And what this means is when line power is removed and it goes on to battery, it's going to send us email. This script uses Python, so we're going to net edit the script now. So let's go to the original script since we've made a back copy. Uh, SD on battery. Okay, so we do not need anything in this file. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and delete everything in this file right now, and we're going to replace it with Python script. I did not create this Python Python script, and I will link it in the description of the video. So uh, go ahead and fill out this information, um, and you can change uh, the actual message and everything. Of, of uh, This is the subject, so you can change the subject to whatever you would like it to say, and uh, you can change the body of the email, which would be this message text part right here. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this with my credentials. I don't want to show that on video and then we'll test it. OK, I'm back. I've edited both on battery and off battery scripts with my email uh, information. I've put on screen my phone so we can live demonstrate the email alerts. So uh, I'm going to unplug the UPS. It's unplugged. And I'm going to plug it back in. We see the first email alert. And now we see the second email alert. As you can see, I've edited it to say now on battery power. And the next one is now on line power. So now that we have email alerts working um, with the UPS, we're going to now work on allowing SNMP uh, to query the APC, or in our case, uh, Triplight uh, UPS to get information so we can graph. To enable SNMP uh, pass through, we first need to install SNMP client and server. To do this, we're going to use app get install SNMPD and SNMP. Uh, one is the client and one is the server. Now that we have SNMP service running <clears throat> and fully operational, we need to add um, APC UPSD information through SNMP service. I'm doing this using Libre NMS um, scripts <clears throat> um, because that's what I use to monitor my network. So we first need to edit uh, or create a script um, inside the directory.
I've actually already created the script, but for this video, we'll act like it doesn't exist. So we're going to sudo nano and then the script name. I got this from uh, the Libre MNS um, GitHub page. The only thing I had to change was the location of Grep. Um, their script had the wrong location. Um, this is the proper location. Um, so that's the only change I had to make. So once we've created that file, the next thing you need to do is edit your um, SNMPD config file. Let's do that. And I've simplified my my config. Um, the only thing you need to do uh, is extend SNMP with the following line. And what this will do is it will extend uh, the data pass through. So once we edit that, Need to restart the service. Okay, now that we have the service restarted, I'll walk you through adding it to um, Libre MMS. Okay, this is, I have added the host to Libre NMS. Um, and what you need to do is edit the host and then go into application. And you need to enable UPS using APC UPS. And once you enable that, then you can click on it, apps. And if you wait a little bit, you'll actually see the graphs are actually getting data. Now, considering this is not a APC branded UPS, we're not getting all the data, but we're getting a very good amount of data. We're getting the current charge of the batteries, and we're getting current runtime, and we're getting the load. Honestly, that that's good enough for me. 